Well, it's deja vu all over again. Uh, yeah, this is the uh, second uh, editing and redoing of this episode because the first one was, well, the audio was all messed up. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Well, welcome back to the hangar. Um, I'm sort of recording this out of order. I'm recording the introduction when I've already done a lot of work, but I filmed that work. So, anyways, the hangar door is closed right now behind me, but it was open for the entire time I've been working on this engine. Um, I am reassembling the engine. Yay, got all the parts in. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's finally coming together. <laughs> I'm happy about that. Uh, so yeah, follow along, um, hope you enjoy what you see, if you have any questions leave it in the comments and at the bottom there, like and subscribe, subscribe if you like what you see, but hit the like button, and um, yeah, so um, yeah, this is a short intro, um, it's just putting the engine together, I'll see how I cut all this up and edit it, that kind of stuff, and uh, um, yeah. We'll, um, we'll get right on to it, and uh, the next scene you'll see will be with the hangar doors open, so you'll see daylight. And, um, yeah. Well, let's um, hit her patter, let's get at her. Okay, uh, the redo of this video uh, shortened greatly. This is only about 15 minutes long, which is half the length of the previous one that had really bad audio. I've uh, I've decided to change things up a bit. Instead of uh, fast forwarding through sections to shorten the time, I just shortened the clips and left everything at normal speed. So, um, as you see here, I am cleaning the crankcase with MEK. And hang on a second here. Ooh, nice transition. And the reason I'm doing that is to remove all traces of grease and oils, what have you, and dirt. Uh, so that the sealant compound, the Loctite 518, uh, that is used to seal the two halves of the crankcase together, that sealant compound has something uh, nice and clean and oil-free to adhere to, so I have a proper seal. I'm working in this bucket, as you can see also, because if I drop something, I don't want it to fall on the floor and roll underneath this workbench, and then i got to go hunting for some tiny little piece that is gone. Um, yeah, I, I'm also cleaning up a little bit on the crankcase. I noticed that there's a bit of a staining sort of thing from the old engine seals that were on there, the crankcase seals. Uh, so I'm just using the uh, uh, Scotch-Brite uh, pad. There's no oils or anything or, or or cleaning solutions on there. This is just to scrape it down. And then of course um, afterwards, which I didn't show in this edit, uh, I, I wiped it down and I blew it out with air and I, I cleaned it and then I re-lubricated those, uh, those bearings. So yeah, that's that's what's happening here is um, uh, me cleaning things up before the insertion of new O-rings. There's the bag. Yeah, remember those O-rings on uh, the bearings that were bad? Well, I got the new O-rings. I'm checking all the bearings right now, making sure that uh, uh, I remove the one that's bad, and there it is, uh, the very end. Hang on a second, you'll see me peel it off, and it's, yeah, it's broken and junk. And the new O-ring goes on, and that means the crankcase is now ready to be inserted into the, uh, or sorry, the crank is ready to be inserted into the crank case. Boy, this is tougher than I thought, <laughs> doing this narration all in one shot. But here's a milestone moment. Uh, I'm picking up the crankcase, and I'm going to put it. Uh, pick up the crankcase. Picking up the crank, and I'm going to be putting it into the crankcase. <laughs> oh boy, I'm I'm just going to leave these mistakes in uh, in the narration because it just makes it more fun. And there we go! Yay! Just like all the little kids that they have that that uh, cheering sound. I, sh I should get that. Uh, that audio file and use that. So yeah, it's uh, the crankcase and the crank are now mated. Oh no! Boo! Have to remove it. Well, of course, I have to remove it because now I'm going to be applying that Loctite 518 uh, sealant compound to the half of the 
crankcase <clears throat> in order to um, seal it up. There's no gasket for this engine. It's just a, just a sealant compound that is used. Now, oh, and by the way, how do you like these transitions? I'm I'm playing with them. I'm you know every time I do a cut, I do a transition. Oop, there's another one. Now, when I got this tube of 518, I thought, yeah, it's like any other liquid. You just kind of squeeze it out there. No, my God, you need gorilla hands to squeeze this stuff out. It does not want to come out. And I cut the uh, the nipple back a ways to make the hole a little bigger. You know, no, it still doesn't want to come out very easily. It took a lot of effort to squeeze that stuff out. Now, I don't know if that's how it's supposed to be or is this stuff drying out? Oh, there we go. There's the view from the top. You can see all the sealant in the areas that the manual says you need to apply it. And here we go. There's the professional flip. Boom. And the other half of the crankcase is now being lowered into place. Cue the children cheering. Yay! Again. And ah, uh, there we go. We're starting to get, uh, get it looking like an engine again. Of course, I've got to tap it down in place, make sure that the uh, the engine seals, by the way, have uh, gaps in them, and you're supposed to make sure that those gaps line up with the oil uh, holes in there. That's very important so that oil flows. Those seals have to be oriented correctly. And here I am with the torque wrench, torquing everything down. Now the torque specification is called for 210 inch pounds of torque. There's the thumbs up. It's all done. And 210 inch pounds in foot pounds, well, just divide it by 12, and there's your foot pounds. And now the engine is upright. Of course, I'm going to be removing all those threaded rods, and there you can see them gone because it's easier to put the pistons on when those threaded rods are not there. Um, needle bearings. These are uncaged needle bearings on the uh, the connecting rod and they are in pain in the backside so I had to make a little plug that aids in the installation of these needle bearings and now we get to the part that well I only show it once on camera but I had to do it four or five times because, oh, the little ring fell out or something else and, yeah, they didn't line up properly and whatnot. So I make it look simple with the editing and the video here, but uh, putting those pistons on was another P-I-T-A, pain in the you, you know what. But they did go on, and the... Uh, as you can see, they're they're on, and now I'm installing those long threaded rods. Uh, well, not a threaded all the way through, but you know they're uh, to hold the cylinder heads down, and uh, yeah, putting uh, tightening them down in place. Now I used a, a double nut method where I put two nuts on the top, and tighten them up, and then I can uh, torque these rods down and uh, and um, to tighten them up into place. And here we go. Now I'm putting a uh, pipe clamp onto the uh, piston gently. It's not tight, but it's snug, and I'm uh, using that as a piston ring compressor. Now, if you're going to be doing this, remember the piston rings, um, uh, there's an indexing pin on the pistons, and you've got to make sure that the gap for the piston rings is where that indexing pin is. You don't want to uh, tighten it down and, and try to do it without that. So make sure that, that you orientate your piston rings correctly before you uh, put the pipe clamp or any other clamp down on there. And uh, so here we go. It's uh, lining it up, and then I'm going to tap it down into place. And, of course, with movie magic, I, uh, you will see this transition. Here we go. It's tapping it down, and boom. Now one's down, and the second one is now going down into place and this looks like it's so easy and so quick. It wasn't. Um, I had to uh, take it off and put it back on a, uh, one or two times for, for each one until I got them down in the right location. So there we go. Now I just remove the pipe clamp and uh, lower it down the rest of the way. So I'm going to stop the narration here for a second and because I do uh, say something to the camera. It works as a piston ring compressor.
yes, those pipe clamps or hose clamps do work quite well. And uh, there, now I'm I'm putting the cylinder heads on, and uh, of course I put the the uh, the the uh, gasket down first in, in, into the um, uh, cylinders and the heads are going on but I can't tighten them you 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 have to align them uh, there's an alignment tool that you can purchase to align the heads I don't have one of those so I'm putting the exhaust manifold on and tightening it down and that will hold the cylinders in proper alignment as well so little another little trick sort of thing I really should have picked up that thing it's, it's cheap it's like 30 bucks or something for the alignment tool which is nothing more than just a metal bar with the holes drilled in the right spot but so is the exhaust manifold it's got the same holes drilled in the right spot and so I'm using the exhaust manifold as the alignment tool for the cylinder heads and that should work quite well um, now of course the uh, washers and the nuts are going on the top and then um, as I'm as I'm doing this you might notice I pick up an Allen key and uh, use that uh, I, I go into a, a, a little narration on on what I'm doing with it and how that works by putting the uh, washers that kind of stuff on the um, on the uh, cylinder heads so hang on a second we're gonna go out of narration for a minute one difficulty that happens is um, putting these washers and, and stuff on there without them falling off to the side. The easiest way to cure that is to slide it onto anything like an Allen key, place that on the top of the stud, let go of the washer, and it falls right on. Done. No falling anywhere else. Perfect. Do the same thing with the with the nuts. Only you need a smaller Allen key, but well, maybe not. This one would work too. And uh, just place it on top. Let it drop on place, and then just start spinning it down. There, problem fixed. One way of doing it. There are many. Yeah, so now I'm uh, back to the torque wrench. Um, I hope you enjoyed that little tip on how to get washers and nuts onto a bolt that is uh, stuck uh, down or, or uh, yeah, that's stuck down in, the, in some sort of a well um, where you can't get your fingers into. That's such a pain in the ass. <laughs> I can remember rebuilding lawnmower wrenches, that kind of stuff, and uh, uh, you drop the washer, it goes between the fins, and it's like, oh man, what a pain. And you got to dig it out of there sometimes. So yeah, just uh, use an Allen key or a screwdriver or something small and slide the washer or the nut onto it. And, um, and uh, like I showed there. All right, now I'm I'm uh, applying. Uh, I'm getting close to the end here. I'm putting the vibration dampeners, those those rubber pieces that go on the fins. I'm making sure they go in place. And um, yeah, oh, hang on a second. I'm going to go out of narration. I uh, I do a little bit more yak yak in the in the hanger. These metal shrouds uh, are for the cooling. Um, on the 503 engine, but they're also part of the engine. Uh, the exhaust gaskets, for example, go on both sides, one on either side of this metal shroud. And likewise, the intake also. Both sides. And, yep, that's, um, um, if you think that uh, uh, this one quickly, uh, that little bit, it's because someone else walked in the hangar. And, oh, look at that. I was using a Loctite on these nuts. I'm putting the intake manifolds on and um, uh, oh, there we go. There's the book. I'm looking for the torque specs for the intake manifolds. I didn't find any, so I simply tighten them till refusal, meaning that you tighten it till it doesn't want to tighten much more, but you don't over torque it and break or strip something. So uh, uh, we're getting close to the outro portion of this, so thank you very much for following along with the narration. Okay, uh, well, I'm going to uh, close this video off here. Not a whole lot of talking for me while I'm here at the hangar, so I'm probably going to be doing a lot of narrating. Um, when I process this 
here. Um, okay, so what have I got done here? Let's take a look. It's done. Now I'm going to have to take this top shroud off again. Um, I just put it on for fitting and that kind of stuff, just to make me feel better. <laughs> but I have to put the PT, uh, the um, sorry, the uh, mag assembling, the fan assembling, all that has to go on here. Um, the ignition coils have to go on. Um, yeah, there's quite a bit that needs to be mounted yet on this side of the engine. It's all sitting. Uh, sorry about the bad cam camera work there. All this stuff here needs to go on. So, yeah, it's not quite finished, but it's, uh, oh, it's got pretty good compression. Uh, it is assembled. It is assembled, and um, um, yeah, all I'm going to do now is I'm going to stuff some rags inside the uh, manifolds so nothing gets inside. Stuff a rag in the exhaust. So you can see that. So a rag in here, just so nothing gets inside. There. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for uh, following along with my mat this day, and uh, in a nice, bright, sunny hangar. I've uh, I don't have all the lights turned on because I'm letting the outside daylight just filter in and enjoying the nice warm weather. It's not raining today, thank goodness. And um, uh, So, once again, thanks for following along. Um, keep those comments coming. Uh, hit that like button. And uh, I think I've said that four times already. And uh, we will catch you again in the hangar. And remember, keep your stick on the ice. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is a much, much shorter version. I... Um, I <laughs> removed a whole lot of stuff. Hopefully you like it. Hopefully you hit the like button. And if you like what you see, subscribe. And thank you very much. We'll see you again in the hangar. Bye-bye.